if you get a call with, with um, what may be really clinically important information from a partner or family member. It's not about a threat to third parties, but it may be about you know, drinking or abusive behavior. And clearly, you don't even acknowledge that your client uh, is your client. But what does one do with the information you get? And I think you know, there are the two pieces. I can take the, the um, ethical component first, I think. Uh, and that is, I think we're, we're obligated to consider what we've heard, and it's wise to check in with a client about it. You know, um, the problem with third-party information, and this is the problem with a Tarasoff based on third-party information, is that we don't know what's going on in the relationship. So if a, um, a, a partner or you know, a friend or whomever it might be is really angry at our client right now, um, this may be, you know, payback or it may be a, an escalation and so we need to be mindful of trying to consider is there you know are there two sides to this story checking it out with a client but if the client verifies it and says well you know I've been drinking a little bit more than I like to obviously it's very useful to have that information um, so we make a clinical judgment I think our, the ethical component is this is to we need to use the information to the best of our ability to further the client's treatment and we make a clinical judgment um, kind of the second piece about how useful is it? Um, what's the client's reaction? And how we couch it? You know, so uh, we are in the position of getting more information about a client, which typically is a good thing to have. And we have to be thoughtful about: is it reliable? Um, what does the client think about it? What do we say? Um, and um, the uh, and then when we uh, get to a place of saying, okay. This seems like it would be a concern, like uh, significant increases in drinking, or or a client who hasn't told us that they've been drinking despite our having asked, and it's a significant problem. Um, obviously, we've got to ask about that. You know, it, it seems to me to be kind of uh, both clinically really important and ethically because we can't provide appropriate treatment if um, w we have a client who's engaged in behavior that would. Um, in many circumstances, undermine the ability of, of their ability and our ability to uh, have them make use of treatment. Regarding third-party information given to us, let's say that the client, for example, is in, I increased in their drinking, and this would give us a direction to address the matter generally with the client. But we wouldn't say, "Oh, by the way, Mr. Jones, your wife called and informed me that you've been drinking too much lately." Of course, the patient can deny he's even been drinking at all. We, we have as our client um, the person about whom we've received a call. We are, there's a, an interesting argument ongoing right now about do we owe a duty of confidentiality to the person who's called and given us this information. Um, and let's say it's the, it's the spouse who's called and given us this information. Um, and on the one hand, one can say, yes, they have called us in our professional capacity. So we owe them a duty of confidentiality. On the other hand, they are calling us for the purpose of giving us information about a client and to arguably, to use the Ewing court's words, further the treatment of the client. Um, and so the other side of the argument here is that we have discretion in disclosing who that person is. Um, one exception, however, and that is if you have permission to um, be talking with the wife. So interestingly enough, in Gino Colillo's situation, he had given an authorization or a written release to Dr. Goldstein to talk to Mr. Colillo. And, um, and so he could, and in fact, might, uh, Dr. Goldstein might have been able to say, without running into any legal or ethical difficulty, to Gino, I just got off the phone with your father, and your father told me that you threatened to kill so-and-so. And um, although here you're talking about more generic information that's not about an imminent harm to a third party, um, it, it, that particular circumstance would be different. We wouldn't necessarily have to uh, refrain from disclosing the um, identity of the person who's given us information, refrain from disclosing that to our client. And again, that, this is a judgment call that you're going to make. If you say um, to this client, just to take this one step further, um, Wondering whether you've been having difficulty or drinking more. That's been a problem. Did my wife call you? Okay. And then we end up having to, to uh, make a spur of the moment judgment about, okay, do I disclose that? Um, you know, or he said, yeah, I was there when my wife called you. Obviously, 
you know, we're not going to be protecting uh, the, the wife further because he knows that this is going on and we're going to be having a conversation um, based upon uh, the information that he's just provided. It is your clinical judgment or my clinical judgment about what is uh, the potential benefit here? Is it needed? Is it necessary? Okay. Um, and sure, if I get a call about very seriously concerning behavior by my client that I think has some reliability to it, I'm very likely to broach the topic. And how I do that will depend in part on the client, the relationship, and the person who called me. So, um, you know, d please don't take it as it's ethical or unethical to, uh, or rather unethical to say to the client, so-and-so called me, that it's, you know, um, against the rules, what it's, what it's going to be is, is it in your clinical judgment an appropriate sharing of information? Again, this, this notion of the boundary issues around information disclosure, when somebody contacts us as a family member, you know, when we share information, well, the other side of the coin, the other question is, um, when, uh, when are we permitted to contact family members if, for example, we have concerns about a client's suicidality, okay? We have a fair amount of leeway in that regard. It's, again, a judgment call. Both case law uh, and our statutes related to confidentiality of medical information suggest that um, we get to make the call of I think it would be protective to contact a family member of this particular client and the client has threatened suicide, or I think it's not wise to do. So um, can we call a family member when, a, when we believe that a client is suicidal? Absolutely. Have people uh, been sued for that? Yeah, but in general, not successfully. One case with which I'm familiar involved um, a client calling and saying that they were suicidal, and when the therapist asked where they were, they hung up. The client called the, uh, I'm sorry, the therapist called the client's home, and the person who picked up the phone was the client's mother. The therapist had a conversation with the client's mother about his immediate concern around the client and her suicidality. The therapist, the um, parent was at home and went and checked on uh, her daughter, who indeed had taken an overdose of pills and was in the bathroom. She called the police. After the um, daughter was taken to the hospital, uh, her stomach was pumped. She was um, held on a psychiatric unit for a while and then released. She then um, engaged in the second most favorite indoor sport in the United States. She sued the therapist. And um, she sued the therapist for a breach of confidentiality, and she lost because the court, both at the trial level and then at the appellate level, said that um, the therapist has a primary obligation to protect the, the patient's life, and that if in the therapist's estimation it was necessary, it was a reasonable and necessary step to take in order to protect this client's life and from imminent physical harm, they could disclose information to family members. Less um, emergent situations are more problematic. So um, if I want to talk to family members about protecting the client, but the client has made some vague uh, statements about suicidality and hasn't had an attempt in three years, I'm probably going to need to get a, an authorization in order to do that. Okay? Uh, so 